everyone, it is time to start your engines as we look into the NFT play to earn racing game, Nitro League Racing. So let's jump into Balthazar's research report and review this NFT game. Nitro League is set in the year 3050 in a future Earth enjoying a far more optimistic quality of life than what we're used to. Civilization's focus has been on nature and the preservation of our planet. As a result, even in urban areas, the Earth is covered in greenery and animal life is flourishing. Disputes between countries are no longer settled by war and conflict, but rather through car racing. To be fair, conflict in the year 3050 is a little more straightforward than it is nowadays. There are only six countries after all, better known as the Supreme Six. These six nations have existed in relative harmony for centuries, understanding and tolerant of their differences. What? A video game with lore of a world that is peaceful and better off than it is now? Usually when we're reviewing these NFT games, it seems like most of the lore is apocalyptic or very negative about our future. So this is kind of actually refreshing that they have a positive spin on our future for once. Honestly, I'm not really sure how much the lore is really gonna play into something like a racing game anyway, so I don't know if it matters, but at least they're giving us something and we'll see how much of it is actually going to be implemented into the gameplay. I also just think having different clans to race against is going to make trash talking your friend or other people from different clans a heck of a lot more fun. Looking at their gameplay trailer, you're going to be able to see what these NFT cards are going to look like and a little bit of the clips of the actual racing gameplay. Those with a keen eye will note that the aesthetic of each vehicle is inspired by different eras of human history, starting from the year 2020 up to the year 3050. There's also going to be five different types of rarities going from a common car up to a legendary. Common cars are cheaper and deliver less performance than higher rarities. This rarity system is something we've seen in most P2E games and is something that Nitro League team has identified can cause a problem, albeit a problem worth solving. As such, it is warming to know that the Nitro team is aware of the problem. It'll be interesting to see how they solve it, as they have already implemented a rarity system which gives higher rarity classes, stat advantages, and implicitly a higher value in cost. Perhaps it'll come down to matchmaking and dynamic difficulty. It definitely is a little bit confusing to me that they would one say, hey, yes, this is a problem, but yet we're also going to implement rarities anyways. So hopefully we can grab an interview and get more in-depth answers with the team about that specific topic, because I think there's a lot of gamers who look at play to earn games and really worry that they're all going to become pay to win. In Nitro League Racing, there is also going to be a ranking system. You have to be a member of a clan to race in Nitro League. Within the clans, there's a hierarchy based on each racer's reputation points or RP. Winning a race earns you RP, but when you're not performing well, you may lose a chunk of your accumulated RP. By ranking up in the Nitro League, a player will move through different tiers, but there's incentive to keep racing regularly. If you stop playing the game for a while, there will be a decay in your RP, which will lead you to demotion of your rank over time. Of course, in a competitive racing game, it really makes sense to have a ranking system. So it's good to see that they have that and they have systems to really incentivize people to keep playing rather than just achieve a high rank and move on. It's always really annoying in a game when a player hasn't played for a year, but somehow still has better ranking than you do. The way the team is going to implement more of these NFT cars is through fusion cloning, which honestly sounds like breeding with a lot of other games. But of course, cars don't breed. The fusion cloning works to create more playable cars that will enable more players to get into the game over time. Cloning will be one of the most sought after activities in the game, as it will see new vehicle NFTs minted that have more stats valuable than the Genesis cars. This is a bit unusual as usually the Genesis NFTs are more valuable, but not in Nitro League. To produce a fusion clone, the player must have two Genesis cars and a whole list of things required to start breeding. This process will result in two original cars being downgraded to level one, but the yield is a new car whose basic attributes are higher than the two parent cars. You can see here on this list that the requirements for cloning is quite extensive. Now, when I first heard that they're implementing this concept that the newer NFTs are actually gonna be stronger than the older ones, it kind of freaked me out and I was like, mm, that's kind of odd, why are they doing that? And you know, every other NFT project, it seems to be the first NFTs that are created are the most valuable. However, the more I thought about it, I was like, hmm, this is kind of an interesting idea because I think it actually forces players to play the game more so so that they can get stronger NFTs. In a lot of these other games, people just buy up the initial NFTs, they sit on them, sometimes they don't even play the game because they know the resale value if the game does well will be a lot higher one day. In Nitro League Racing, it seems like you're gonna have to actually play the game if you want the more valuable NFTs. So we'll have to see how this plays out in the end, but I think it's at least a cool concept that they're going for. 
In Nitro League, there's going to be three different types of racing modes, including a free to play, a solo event, and a team event. There are only time trials in the free to play mode. The objective here is to beat other players' high scores on the racetrack. This kind of race does not consume fuel and only has a random chance of winning a small number of credits and everyday rewards like base colors or boosters. In solo events, they're going to be very similar to the free to play mode, except that these races consume fuel and require a car suited for the event. While not stated in the white paper, we can only assume that consuming fuel means it's an asset you will need to buy to play, so it will cost you to enter. The top ranked players will have a chance of winning nitro tokens, larger amounts of credits, fuel, blueprints for specific cars, car parts, boosters, and XP. Likewise, in the multiplier racing events, the race will also consume fuel, and depending on the racer's position at the end of the race, they will either gain or lose RP, and also get some rewards. Finally, we have the team events, which is the same as solo events, except that the teams will be racing in both modes instead of the individual racers. In time trials, one needs at least 15 team members to participate for the team to be ranked. The score is settled through the average of the fastest times accomplished by each team member. I like that the team is thinking through different racing modes and have included at least one free to play version where we can get a taste of the game. Rewards may be small, but at least we know if we want to go get some more cars and NFTs to get further into this game. If indeed fuel is a crypto that you have to pay in order to get into these races, then of course it's going to make things feel a little bit more on the line, which is fun for some people, but I know for others it might feel a little bit too risky. It reminds me a bit of playing in Skyweaver's Conquest mode where you actually have to pay to get into the tournament and you only get cards if you win a certain amount of games. I'm assuming it could make the economy more sustainable though because they could either burn those tokens or use those tokens to reward other players. The team events also seem pretty interesting to me. While it does sound fun, 15 people for these team events is a lot of people, so you're going to need either a guild or a huge community around you to participate. It doesn't sound like these team events are really just for you and a couple of your friends. In Nitro League, there is also the Garage, which is a high-tech laboratory that will double as a player's personal space or lobby. Much of a player's time will be spent in the garage tinkering away. Several activities will be here such as minigames, car upgrades, store access, social activities, notifications, and an asset showcase. The following list that you see here is a list of things that you'll be able to do in the garage. Of course, no racing game is complete without some level of car customization. In Nitro League, there's going to be ways to upgrade your cars, to decorate them, and also get power-up consumables. This is really important for any game that has cars. Think about Rocket League, really half the fun, even though it's not a racing game, is just being on the field and showing off your cool new car. As far as the tokenomics and blockchain, we can't seem to find any official statement on which blockchain the game builds its token economy. The Nitro token is built on an ERC-20 contract on Ethereum at the very least. A logical assumption looking into their IDO launch partners would be that they're building on the Polygon network, more specifically the Polygen launchpad. You can also see in the graphic here the way they are going to distribute their Nitro tokens. The Nitro League team seems to cover a wide range of expertise amassing many years of experience. Digging into their LinkedIn, we can see that these are heavy hitters in their field and have been doing it for a while. Personally, I don't have any concerns about the team from the overview that I'm looking at here, but if you want to go do more in-depth research, head over to the report and you can find a list of the full team members. So perhaps you're already very interested and excited in playing a blockchain racer game, so when is Nitro League supposed to come out? Well, the interesting thing is actually the roadmap has changed a bit since this research report was launched. You can see here actually when the research report launched that their multiplayer racing experience, at least the version one, was set to come out in quarter two of 2022. However, now on their website, you can see here that in quarter three will only be a simulation racing version one, and then we won't actually get the multiplayer racing 3D version one now until quarter one of 2023. The white paper is also lacking in information when compared to other play to earn projects. The section on tokenomics is all of one line of text, but we've managed to find the information on their homepage instead. At least Nitro League conveys a lot of the gameplay through the white paper, which we appreciate. It is easy to grasp what the game is and aims to be, even though the lore could use some more work and the DAO part is very shallow. Even if the white paper may be lacking, it is most likely because the team hopefully has their focus on what's important, the product. Really, I'm not surprised at all that they've pushed the launch of their racing 3D game mode further into the future now into 2023. When I first was looking through this report and I saw that they had planned to launch within the next month or so, I was like, wow, they must have been working on this for quite some time. It's probably better off for the game itself that they pushed out the release to a much further date to give them more time to make this game correct and have quality behind it. 
Now it's another NFT game that's on my list that's, ah, uh, I want to play it now, but I guess we're going to have to wait to 2023. Before we jump into Balthazar's concluding thoughts and future outlook for Nitro League Racing, I do want to remind you on Balthazar's website, you can sign up to get more information about our upcoming public token sale. We have a lot going on here at Balthazar that I am very excited about, so I hope you go sign up for more information. As for Nitro League Racing, while there's been some misses, overall our research into Nitro League is full of hits. How could you not like a futuristic car racing game set in the year of 3050? Both the CEO and CTO have many years of experience under their sleeve. Judging from the Nitro League team's LinkedIn, we don't have any concerns about Nitro League's tech stack and merits. Based on their social nomics as well, this game has a big following, which gives us an idea of potential players' interest in the game. Nitro League is definitely a game on our short list of high potential upcoming play to earn NFT games, and we are very eager to pull it from the garage and line up on the grid. Personally, I'm pretty excited as well to finally jump into a blockchain racing game. It's been quite some time since I've played a racing game, probably since Need for Speed, where I actually had the PlayStation 2 racing wheel on my table out to play through Need for Speed. And that was a really great time. So I hope they can provide a great racing game experience for all of us into NFT games. However, as I did look through this project, I did think, hey, this is a really good looking game, but I still feel like I have to bring in the caveat of, for a blockchain game. With this potentially being one of the first fully NFT racing games built out with some decent quality, I hope that they're able to use those funds to reinvest into more of the game and even make it better. I really hope when this game releases, people say, wow, this game looks incredible, this game looks good, and not, hey, this game looks good for a blockchain game. If they can up the wow factor so that people from Forza or Dirt or Need for Speed or whatever name your favorite racing game, that kind of audience actually wants to play this game, that would be huge. Also, I agree with the Alpha Research team that I'd like to see more information put out by the team. Things like what blockchain is this game actually going to end up on and how are they going to handle the pay to win aspects of the game. So stay tuned here on this channel and hopefully we can grab an interview with the Nitro League team here soon. For now, this is Luke Plays to Earn with Balthazar. I hope you go check out some of our other research videos and get excited for all the great NFT games that are coming your way. Peace out, Paul Long. Adios, everyone.